One day I'm going to fly away. Amen. 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 All troubles will be over. My heavenly home. You know who I can't wait to see? Not my mama. Not my dad. Not anybody else but Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless. Page 75. Grab your book. Some of you know it by heart. We'll sing all, all three. One day, if you're born again, you'll fly away just like me. Amen. Amen. All right, time to do it.
You never know when you can reach somebody for Jesus Christ. Amen. And I ain't never turned down nobody yet, and I'm not going to do that the first time. So. We've been singing for 50 years. I told Randy, so we celebrate our 50th year in March. Amen. And I'm just thankful God's let us go that long. We're still growing. There's a lot of people in the ministry that's quit, but you can't quit. you got to keep on serving God. So as long as I can find a way to get there, my hardest thing is finding somebody to drive us around, y'all. Y'all got to pray. We need some help. But uh, we have one couple that's helping us in the uh, bless their hearts. We've got to work them to death. I told the Lord, I said, keep them coming, keep them coming. And they kept going. I said, as long as you, you, as long as you got a door open, we're going to go. So that's what we're doing. We try to go. Let me say it's an honor to say, I mean, with Randy, I'm not saying with him in person, but say he I can't, I can't do everything. So I'm honored that he would ask us. I, I love me and Don love Randy. But I'll tell y'all, I'll tell you what y'all men should have done. Y'all men should have dressed up like ladies and come to our ladies meeting. You know, you could have, you could have, you could have had your high pitched voice and said it just like that. But anyway, but that 
was the best thing of feet I've ever had in my life. Okay? <laughs> She still got her wit. <laughs> oh, she never loses that.
And he didn't know about our 50th. He didn't get to come to that. We wanted to come see him and Mary. Amen. And Miss Cindy couldn't go, and the other Miss Cindy couldn't come, and Miss Michelle said, I'll go. Amen. Amen. I mean, we could do a whole lot more if we could just see how to drive, but God didn't, but you know, God sent somebody to help us. Amen. If you just trust God, He'll meet your need. Randy, yeah. you get off the boat if you see me driving up. <laughs> I would too. She, she said she'd go drive that van. I said, No, with me, and she will answer. Hey, all the cars would get off the boat. <laughs>
Got one of you in the shirt. Randy's been a good friend. Yes. He has. He's been a good friend. Yes. And I thank God for it. Him and Mary. Mary. They've been good friends. <coughs> and I'm standing here tonight. We'll get the devil a black eye. Amen. They told me I had five years to live. Mm, go yeah. ahead, brother. Mm. Mm. And brother, it's been 19 years in that full of people back then, you know. He got up and he says, well, he said, Brother Randy single? He said, these enlighteners are single? He said, I set them up on a little blind date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, we fell in love with each other. And uh, they've been down to our place. I put on a preacher's count meeting, brought them down, let them sing all week long. And... Uh, We've just about done everything you can think of together, and it's a joy. I didn't know they was coming tonight, and they just flat made my night. Amen. 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 And uh, we are, we're all getting older. I asked them uh, how old they was the first time I seen them in 1994, and Donna said 17 years old. And I said, you're a liar. <laughs> Frankie said, if I could see you, I'd hit you. <laughs> Well, let's sing a little.
tremble voice I fuse it from the world above It made my soul rejoice It sung with words and the melody Like the rippling waters flow But amazing grace, how sweet the sound It's the sweetest song I know All days of grace I'm so sweet the sound Oh, 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 oh,
we've been through or will go through. Yeah. He's still God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, Pig McCamby used to say, he's God on the mountain, yeah. God in the valley. Yeah. He's God all in between. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So good to see all of you tonight. Man, I'm going to tell you, we could leave now and say it's been good to be in the house of yeah. Yeah. Uh, You know, the sad thing about this is this. Not everyone can honestly sit here tonight and say, God's good. That's right. That's right. Because you don't think you've experienced the goodness of God. Mm. But the truth of the matter is, if you're breathing, That's right. Amen. you've experienced the goodness Amen. and Amen. mercy of God. Amen. 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 Well, it's so good to see all of you tonight. We appreciate you coming. And uh, appreciate Dunn's Grove and some of them folks are back tonight. We appreciate them. Good to see you kiddos. And uh, thank you for coming. And uh, good to see Brother Jeremy Blake here tonight. Amen. 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 Good to see you, buddy. And, uh, the, uh, and listen, I told you last night, if you, don't, if you don't see me moving around, shaking hands a lot, going all over the church, I'm, I'm just having a terrible time with one of my knees. And it, it felt better a little bit today. And then we started to get up here a minute ago, and then it started locking up again. That's the way the devil works. Amen. Amen. And so uh, it's bone on bone. I got a steel plate in there that's rubbing the top part of the bone. When it hits that top part of that bone, it'll cause you to lose every train of thought you ever hope to have. Amen. And so I'm just trying to make it until they, they've ordered some rooster comb injections they're going to try. They're going to take that hardware out of my leg here in a few days and see if it won't give me a little bit of relief. And so it's just been a tough uh, month. And uh, But I'm going to tell you something. In, in, that, in this last month since that started happening, the first, it started happening on the 4th of uh, May. What's the day? The day is uh, six. Yeah, it's been a month. And, uh, and since it's been a month since that's happened, uh, we've had over 11 people saved. Amen. I didn't save one of them. That's right. That's right. But even through pain, God let me God preach to where the Amen. salvation message Amen. could be delivered that somebody Amen. would come to know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Amen. And that's what I want to try to do again tonight. That's a, that's a sweet spirit here. I appreciate the opportunity to get to come and just breathe of His name. Amen. And, uh, man, if I start calling names, I see several people. I see some girls over around Monroe. Thank you all for coming. Amen. Excuse me for not getting back there to shake your hand earlier. And uh, good to have them with us tonight. And good to have all of you here. Amen. Amen. How many Lighthouse people's here tonight? Raise Amen. your hand. All right. That speaks Praise well. Amen. Amen. Church. And so if you have your Bible tonight, let's take it. Let's get right on into the Word of God Amen. and get me off my feet sooner. Amen. <laughs> If you have your Bible, take it and turn with me over to Acts. And let's go to chapter 26 of the book of Acts is where we'll take our reading. Book of Acts, chapter 26 is where we'll take our reading tonight. We're going to start it. Uh, I'll just hang on. Amen. <laughs> we'll probably start at verse 1, actually. Amen. When you get to Acts, say Amen. 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 Every time I preach out of the book of Acts, I think about the old boy who broke in a woman's house and was stealing everything she had. He just about had everything loaded up and she woke up, come staggering in the living room. And there he was with a big old screen television. And uh, man, she looked at him, he looked at her, and she didn't own things no do. She went quoting scripture. Man, he froze. She called the law. They come put him in the back seat of the law car, come in there and get her statement. She said, honey, I did the only thing I know to do. He scared me to death. She said, I just started quoting scripture at him. He said, he stopped. Yeah. That policeman said, you quoted scripture at him. He said, yeah, that's all I did. He said, let me go out there and talk to him. He opened that back seat of that law car, and he said, hey, he said, that old woman in there says the only thing she did get you to stop and quote scripture. He said, quote, scripture or nothing. That old woman had an axe in 238s, wouldn't you quit? <laughs> if you read Acts 238, it says repent. Amen. He probably did some of that before he got to the law car. Amen. That law car is probably the best thing he's seen. Amen. He thought that was Jesus when he seen blue lights. Amen. 
I just, I, every time I read out of the book of Acts, I think about that, amen. That ain't got nothing to do with eternity, amen. Unless you were stealing her TV, amen. Oh, man. Well, it's so good to be here tonight. It's good to laugh. Uh, Mary, the Bible said a merry heart doeth good like medicine. Amen. I've seen a lot of people that needed some medicine. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to know that we have a heavenly father that has generated a plan that not one person would ever have to die and miss heaven. Amen. Amen. You say, well, wait a minute, the hell is enlarging itself according to the Bible every day. It is, but that ain't God's fault. Amen. That wasn't God's plan. God, dear friend, what did He do? He started killing off when man sinned in the Garden of Eden started fought and He fell under the Adamic curse. God started killing off His creation, His animals. And He used the blood off of those animals to suffice Him for a sin atonement. But then when men's sins grew so great that no longer would the blood of animals suffice God for a sin atonement, God sent the most perfect, perfect, precious lamb that he could ever have as a sacrifice. And he was a spotless lamb and he was named Jesus. Amen. Amen. And he created a way of escape for each and every person. Amen. That would call upon his name. Amen. If you die and go to hell, you'll go there as an intruder. Yeah. You say, what kind of God would it be that send people to hell anyway? God ain't never sent one person to hell. Right. 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 Your choice dictates where you spend eternity. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about this. I, I, there's several places I could start. I, I thought about here's the Apostle Paul. I like the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, uh, most theologians believe he stood about five foot one inches tall. So you can see why I like the Apostle Paul. And if he was here, he and I could see everything eye to eye. Amen. And so I think about the Apostle Paul. He was quick to speak about his Lord. Now he was a scoundrel before he got saved. That's right. But God changed him. Yeah. Ain't you glad God's still in the change of yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I think about the Apostle Paul and uh, the Jews hated him. Once he converted to Christianity and come to know Christ, they, they wanted to kill him. And so, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, uh, he was bad on one hand and then he was bad on the other hand. Amen. And so here's what happened. He appeared before Festus. And Festus was said, you know what I'm going to do? And he was going to try him. And then the Apostle Paul, he was well educated. He was monk, uh, educated amongst the Romans. Yep. And so if, if he had had an education in today's world, been equivalent to something that probably come out of Yale or something like that. Right. So he was highly educated. And so, but he was not only, how many of you met some educated people that was dumber than dirt? Amen. <laughs> Didn't have a lick of common sense. That's right. I mean, they could tell you when it was going to rain, what direction the rain was coming from, how much rain you was going to get. But when it actually started raining, you had to go out there and lead them in out of it. Yeah. Amen. Because <laughs> they didn't have no common sense. But Apostle Paul wasn't like that. He had, he had an educated sense about it that God had given, but he'd also give him some common sense. And on four different occasions, probably spared his life because they wanted to kill him. And he would use that common sense to play what I call country psychology upon them. And he did this here with Festus. Yeah. The Jews here taught salt and they said, we want to kill him. Yeah. And he said, now hold on a minute, you can't do that. He said, I'm appealing now. He said, I want to be sent to Caesarea. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to be, I want to appear before Caesar. I want to appear before the judge. So Festus has him on trial and Festus looks at him and he said, is that where you want to go? Is that really what you want to do? And he said, I sure do. And so he looked over and he said, well, hold him over then and send him to Caesarea. Send him to Caesar where he'll appear before the judge. And so here he is and Felix was the first one to have him sentenced there. Then Festus comes along, holds him over there. That's all verse 24, chapter 24, 25. I'm trying to paraphrase. And, uh, and so here comes Agrippa in town. Now Agrippa really wasn't even supposed to have been there, but him and his wife Bernice, 
They showed up in the town, and, and so Festus got to telling uh, 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 Agrippa that he's got this man that the Jews wants to kill. And he says, he really ain't done nothing worth dying for. He said, I've, I've questioned him. I put him before me. He said, he's never accused them of anything. And he said, he just believes in this man named Jesus that's supposed to be dead, but he claims he's alive. And he said, that's not worthy to kill him over. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think Santa Claus is alive, but don't kill me over it. Amen. <laughs> You say, well, what are you getting at? And so finally Agrippa says, well, I'll tell you what to do. If you'll sin for him, he said, then I'll let you stand him up in front of me. And he said, I'll try. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Festus sins for uh, Paul, and this is where we come to. And so Festus tells him, he says this, he says, uh, Paul, he says, I'm going to put you in front of Agrippa. But I'm going to let you speak on your own behalf. Yes. That's exactly what Paul wanted. And so here we're at. Yes. Verse 20, uh, chapter 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. He said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa. Because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Look over at your neighbor and say, that's called country psychology he just used. <laughs> Then he begins to tell him, he said, My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation in Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, if they'd tell the truth, yeah. that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Now, if you wondered what that is, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. And so here he is, he's the most, I mean, he was up there with the with who's, 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 who's. Yep. And so here's what he says, And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be that thou uh, uh, thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought within myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. He just agged them on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wanting to kill them. Yeah. Wanting to hurt them. And he said, And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even under strange cities. Look at verse 12. Yeah. I wasn't planning on reading all that other stuff, but I got hung up there. <laughs> Whereupon, I, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me saying in Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, 
For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and those things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. Listen to this. To open the eyes, their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of their sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Look at verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but I showed first unto them of Damascus and Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For this cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained the help of God, I've continued unto this day witnessing both to the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. That Christ should suffer and that He should be first that should rise from the dead and show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Listen to verse 24. And as He thus spoke for Himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But He said, I am not mad, most notable Festus, But speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of the things before whom I also speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost... Thou hast persuaded me to become a Christian. Dear Heavenly Father, hide us behind the cross. Help us tonight. Lord God, we'll give you glory. Save the lost, God, we pray. Draw the backslider back to you and we'll give you glory. And all these people said, Amen. You say, Brother Randy, that's a ton of reading. I hope you don't do an expository message line by line, precept by precept. I'm not going to do that. But what I do want to do is this. I think about here, if you uh, think about this passage of Scripture that we've read to you. Here's Paul after his conversion. And he's under the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost of God. Yes, amen. You know what happened? He brought King Agrippa within reach of salvation and God's eternal glory. I think about that. Agrippa literally had salvation in his fingertips. Amen. He had it in his grasp and he let it slide away. You say, well, how terrible of somebody. Well, before you go to sentence an old King Agrippa, know this tonight, before you walk out of this church tonight, Every person under the sound of my voice, uh, dear friend, is going to have to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, And if you're lost in this building, uh, you're going to have to make a decision on what you do with Jesus. Uh, You're either going to have Him in your grasp uh, and turn Him loose and say thanks but no thanks, or you'll receive Him joyfully as your Savior. Amen. Amen. Every person in the sound of my voice tonight, every one of us are so close to eternal glory and eternal life, eternal salvation. Hello. You see, when He saved me, He didn't save me, dear friend, for just a year. He didn't save me for ten years. He hey, He forgave me of my sins past, my sins present. And thank God He forgave me of my sins future. So we say that. We say that we can have Him in our grasp, dear friend. We don't have to let Him slide through our fingertips. You say, well, I'm not taking him. 
Well, if you don't take him and you let him slide through your fingertips, you miss the pearl of great price. Amen. Amen. Several months ago, I was down on the coast of North Carolina, and there was an old boy out there, and he was picking up oysters. I said, you going to eat them? And he said, nope. He said, can't stand them. I said, well, what are you doing? He said, I'm a cracking them open looking for a pearl. I said, have you found anything? He said, nope, ain't found nothing but sand and this old slug looking thing. I said, put him on the grill and he'll turn into something good. Amen. But I stood there and talked to that man and I got to thinking about, hey, out there all day long picking up those horses, cracking those things up, cracking those things up. And what was he looking for? He was looking for fame and fortune is what he was looking yeah. for. He said, man, if I can just find me a pearl in this thing, he said, man, I could make this, me some money and I could get some fortune off of this thing. Hey, listen, honey, you can look for a lifetime. What does it profit a man or woman to gain the whole world and lose his soul, dear friend? Or what would he give in exchange for it back if he knew, dear friend, that he had lost the pearl of great pride? Uh, so before you take your hand away from what Jesus is offering you of eternal life, right. you might want to consider some other people right. who had Jesus literally right. in their fingertips right. and they let Him slide away. Right. Look over at your neighbor and say, slip sliding away. <laughs> You say, I don't know anybody that that calls uh, or let Jesus slide through their fingertips. Well, let me just give you a few that popped up in my brain and I, I jotted these down. There was a man named Judas who literally had salvation, dear friend, within grasp and he had it in his fingertips and he let it get away from him. You say, how do you know that? I think about this. Uh, Judas was one of the original twelve that, that Jesus chose to follow him. He just walked along and said, follow me. And Judas said, well, seems like a good idea. And do you realize, dear friend, that he sat at Jesus' feet for three years of his ministry. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even sat at the table yeah. with the Master. But while he sat at the table, he was already beginning to turn loose of him. Amen. I mean, listen, Judas saw him raise the dead. Amen. I mean, Judas seen him feed the thousands. Judas seen him, dear friend, take a little boy's sack lunch, uh, dear friend, and just blessed it and let them disciples. Judas was one of them that was a handing it out, and it didn't quit ending. Hey, man, it didn't it didn't run out. They just kept giving and they kept giving and they kept giving, and finally said, "Send twelve baskets home to his mama and say thank you." Amen. Judas seen it. That's right. Yes, he did. Can't tell me Jesus is preaching wasn't different. Amen. Amen. Can't tell me when Jesus prayed it wasn't different. Yep. Hello. But what did he do? He missed it. Yes, he did. Instead of being like John leaning over on the bosom of the beloved, Judas had already sold him. For three, for thirty pieces of silver. That's right. Yes, he did. You say you sure he let that slide through his fingertip? Yeah, I'll tell you, hey, he did. Over in Matthew chapter twenty-six and verse forty-eight, Jesus is in the garden. He's prayed until his sweat became as though it were great drops of blood, and and now they're coming after him. And so, what do they do? Judas has already made the deal with them, and what does he? In 48 he says, Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. Look at verse 49. 
Verse 49 of that says, And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, he called him Lord with his mouth, but he had done denied him with his heart. Right. And so he said, Hell, Master. And he kissed him. I want to tell you something tonight. Uh, hey, listen, honey. King Agrippa wasn't the only one that let it slide through his fingertips. Uh, here's a man by the name of Judas uh, that literally kissed the door of heaven uh, and died and went to hell. You don't want that, do you? Then I think about another man. I think about a young man. He was known in the Bible as a rich young ruler. Matthew chapter 19. If you looked at verse 16, there's a conversation. What happens to the rich young ruler? We know he was clean morally. We know he was earnest. We know he came to the right person. Look what it said. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Look at verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Look at verse 18. And he said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt. Do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And verse 20, The young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If that will be perfect, Go and sell that that thou hast and give to the poor and that shall have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Look at verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying, dear friend, here's a young man, uh, dear friend, that knew the Ten Commandments. Uh, He said, I've kept every one of them. Uh, He said, I haven't broken the laws of Moses. Uh, He said, I've kept it from my youth up. Uh, He said, I'm good. Uh, He said, nothing bad about me. But the Lord looks at him. He said, hey, you're very close to eternal life. Uh, You got it within your grasp. Uh, He said that you're going to have to take and sell everything you got and junk it uh, and pick up your cross uh, and follow me. And he said, That's right. Preach. He went away sorry. Judas let it slide through. The rich young ruler let it slide right through his fingertips. And I think about Agrippa here did the same. If you looked at that, uh, uh, when uh, Paul began to witness to him about how he, that God had literally, dear friend, changed his life. And he began to show him and he said, began to tell him. He said, you know, Grippa, you know what I'm saying is true. He said, you know it. I believe you know it. Uh, and you know why Paul knew that? Uh, because Paul knew, uh, dear friend, that that wasn't just coincidence. Uh, that Agrippa was going to be there that day. Uh, it was a divine appointment God had set up. And Paul knew that Agrippa was under the spell of the Holy Ghost of God. And God had taken the blinders off of Paul's, off of Agrippa's eyes. And Agrippa finally seen Christ in Him crucified. Yes, He did. Had it so close that He stood there and said, Almost. You've convinced me. Almost. But yet so far away. Oh my. I think about old Felix. I mean Felix sent for Paul. Had him in the prison. I said go over there and get that man that keeps talking about Jesus. I want to talk to him a minute. And he brought him up before him. And when he got up before uh, uh, Paul, all of a sudden Paul began to tell him. He said, I was on my Damascus road. And God struck me down. And he began to tell him everything. God, And all of a sudden the power of the Holy Ghost of God, dear friend, had got on feeling so much that he stood there and trembled. He 
and had it within his grasp. But what did he do? He could have got saved. But instead, he sent Paul away and he said, I'll send for you on a more convenient season and we'll discuss this matter of Jesus and eternal life again. Can I tell you something? Do you realize Felix is never mentioned again after that? You see, here's the truth of the matter. You're probably here tonight and, and probably some people in this building, different. you're thinking, if I just get out of here, I, I might accept Christ, but it'll be well down the road in my life and, and I'll do it at the midnight hour of my life. Well, you might have plans of doing that, but God might have plans of sending death after you at 10 o'clock rather than midnight. That's right. That's right. That's good preaching. That's right. That's the truth. Don't let it slip through your fingers. That's right. By saying when it's convenient to me. Maybe. Yes. You see, we love making it all about us and doing things our way. That's right. Yeah, huh? yeah. The Bible said there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end of our way lead us to destruction. You say, preacher, you mean to you really mean those four missed heaven? And they had it so close, they had it within their grasp, and they let it slide. I'm telling you, folks, they got... You say, well, why did they miss it? Well, let me tell you why Judas missed it. Judas missed it because he was disappointed. Hello? You say, what do you mean? Judas became one of the biggest hypocrites on earth. You say, what was disappointing... Uh, about Christ to Judas. It wasn't necessarily that he was disappointed about Christ, but when Jesus chose him to be one of the disciples, they put him over the treasury. And here Christ is continually talking about building his kingdom. What Judas thought, dear friend, he said, good, I'll be the treasure when he builds this kingdom. And you know what? When he found out that the kingdom wasn't going to be built then, but Jesus was going to the cross and be crucified, he became disappointed. And he was so disappointed, he didn't want to have anything to do with him. And he sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Let me ask you a question. You've been disappointed in him. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Some people, dear friend, look at Christ and they come to church, they follow him for a little while, they get in church, they do what they know that they ought to do, dear friend, but they're doing it, dear friend, with this instead of this. That's right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden when they put through some hardships and things don't pan out like that, they get disappointed and they get bitter and they get angry at God, dear friend. Right. And, they say, and they'll say something along these lines. I know there wasn't nothing to that. I shouldn't have never tried it to begin with. Preach. And they got it right there. But they get angry or disappointed because he didn't be Johnny on the spot when they, he, they thought he ought to be. Right. Yeah. Huh? What price would you sell him for? Come on. Yeah. What price have you sold him for? Huh. Some people sell him for popularity. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some people, dear friend, sell him for materialism. Come on. Right. Hmm. Hmm. How many of you know houses and land can be gone tomorrow? Right. Why are we falling in love, dear friend, with the things that's going to burn one day? Amen. 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 So we see Judas was disappointed. Then I think about this. The rich young ruler went away sorrowful. You say, well, what happened to him? He loved his possessions more than he could see that he loved God. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes. Hmm. You know, the older I get, I used to didn't pay that much attention to it. My daddy used to, I remember us going to church. Wouldn't but a mile from our house up to the church, but there were several houses up through there. And on Sunday, we'd pass people, and if the sun was shining, they'd be out there cutting the grass. They'd be out there hedging their hedges, you know, and tending to the flowers and everything, never darkening the doors of the house of God. 
My dad used to look and say, look at that. He said, they're more in love with a rose bush than they are the rose of Sharon. Come on. Yeah. 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 Getting quiet in here now, ain't it? Amen. See, it gets quiet when the rubber gets to meet the road. You say, why is that? Because we've all been guilty. Right. I mean, we can say, hey, how terrible of that rich young man. You know what he liked? He liked surrender in his life. I believe there's a lot of people that get saved at early age in their life, dear friend, and they get salvation, but surrender doesn't come until later on down in life. You say, what's the difference? Salvation's a wonderful thing, dear friend. That makes you a prerequisite for heaven. But the truth of the matter is, surrender, dear friend, lines you up for the blessings of God. Amen. Hey, I got news for you. Hey, when I got saved at eight years old, dear friend, and I, but I wouldn't surrender to everything in my life. I wouldn't surrender. I knew I was saved. I'm going to tell you, when I got surrendered, dear friend, when my heart got broke, and I didn't, I had to look up to see bottom, and all I had was Him, dear friend, I I hung out the white flag and surrendered and he become my all and all. Yeah. I saved at eight years old, but I surrendered at 22 years old. You like surrender tonight? Or are you going to let the blessings of God slip right through your fingertips? Fingertips because it's more about you than it is about him. Come on. Yeah. Look over at your neighbor and say, I like his singing a little better than I'm liking his preaching. <laughs> you say, well, what happened to Agrippa? Why didn't Agrippa get saved? He just refused to enter in the door that had been open for him. That's right. Yes, he did. Just like a lot of people do. That's right. Yeah. Remember in Noah's day? God tells Noah, build me a boat. He said, what's that? He said, don't ask questions, just go to work. <laughs> Noah goes out there, not knowing what a boat is. He ain't got a clue. He said, why are we going to need a boat? Because it's going to rain. I can hear Noah, what's that? <laughs> He never, it never rained upon the earth. But when God spoke to him, he did exactly what God told him to do. He's faithful. For 120 years, we know of that he prepared on the ark and worked on the ark. Out there by himself, people laughing at him. Hello. You know one of the first things that you do if you go to build a structure, especially it's going to be house a bunch of people or put things in, you frame up a door. One of the first things you do. You get the base. You get the foundation. And then you begin to frame your doors and your windows. Amen. Isn't it amazing, dear friend, that there was a door that was standing there wide open. Probably didn't even have a door on it for a while. It was just the frame. But it was still open. That's right. Come on in. Look around. Amen. I mean, it's standing there for 120 years open. They walk by it every day. Looking at that lunatic up there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right, how many of them stood out there and said, What's rain again now? Yeah. Tell us that one more time. I don't know what it is. I just know he said it's going to rain. Yeah. Well, what's that thing you're working on? I don't know. It's a boat. What's a boat? I don't have a clue what a boat is. <laughs> but I can tell you this. The door was there. Amen. And the window of heaven was open. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. God put a window in that thing and He didn't put it in the side. He didn't put it in the bottom. He had it right up there in the top. Why? Yeah. That was to keep Noah and his family, dear friend, focused on their Creator and the one that was holding them, Him in the palm of their hand. Yeah. Dear friend, He said the only way you need to look is up. Can I tell you something? A lot of people's going to miss heaven and they're going to let it slide through their fingertips because they're watching the world. Honey, you better get your eyes on the sky. Amen. Our redemption is Drawing now! 
animals were smarter than the humans. God spoke to the animals and they come over their own accord, the Bible said. Entered into the ark, but when he spoke to man, with the door been open 120 years, they said, Nah, we're not interested in that. Reckon what they thought when they seen that cloud about the size of a man's hand. Reckon what they thought when he opened up the fountains of the deep. I mean, what you don't understand is if you're in the well business, you might understand a little bit about it. We used to have an old man that had an iron rod and he'd walk around and he'd find water. He'd walk around there and that thing just vroom. He'd say, right here, you're going to find water. Man, they'd go drilling or boring down in there and it wouldn't be long till you hit it. But can you imagine that old big ark sitting out there with that door wide open at the time? God looks at, at Noah and says, get your family in, boys. It's a fixing to get deep around here. And they got in. The Bible said God shut them in. Never said God shut the world out. They did that of their own choosing. That's right. They let him slide right through his, their fingers. That's right. And when he opened up the fountains of the deep, could you imagine seeing streams of water that big around all of a sudden just bust the earth all to pieces? <laughs> Worse than any volcano that's ever erupted. That's right. They all wanted in then, didn't they? That's right. Yeah. But it was too late. Right. They done let it slide right through their fingertips. Right. That's what happened to King Agrippa. You know what he did? He loved his pleasure and he loved his position yeah. more than he would love the Savior. That's right. Right. And he said, what would people think if I was to give my life to the Lord? You know, there's a lot of people They'll go to church and they'll go with their friends or something like that and the conviction power of God will get on them and everything. And you can tell, dear friend, God's drawing them, working on them, wanting to do a miraculous thing in their life, dear friend, by giving them eternal life and salvation. Dear friend, and they'll sit there and let it slide through their fingertips because they're more worried about what their friend that come with them is going to say or think or do. And I tell you some hundred years from this night, whenever one of us are in eternity somewhere, it won't matter what anybody said. It won't matter what anybody does. It won't matter what anybody, dear friend, thinks about it. Dear friend, the only thing that will matter is what you did with Jesus. Let me end by saying this. I'm about done. You say, when do we miss it, preacher? I sat down and I began to think back over my life. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we let grace and glory mm -hmm. slide through our fingertips when we've grown up in a Christian home where the Bible's been read, mm -hmm. where prayer is often heard, where we had godly parents for an example of fostering. Amen. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I didn't have none of those. And you may not have. There is exceptions to that, I know. But the majority of us sitting in this building tonight, what I just told you, we've experienced. Amen. Mm -hmm. When are we in jeopardy or letting it slide through? When we've had all those things. But yet we say, I'm not interested. How many of you began to realize one day, I, I used to think my parents were ignorant. <laughs> Hello. I mean, I used to set out to fool them. And I thought I had. Amen. I used to watch my daddy. I'd go to the window. He would leave every morning about 7.30. I'd watch him. He went to work down the road. The school was up the road. I had a 78 Ford Thunderbird. I had one of them 351 Cleveland engines in. And I'm going to tell you, that was a wicked piece of blunder. <laughs> and I thought my calling in life was to see if I could suck the pavement up 
off of the off of the road between our house and our high school where I went to school at. So I'd watch him go down the road. I'd stand there and I'd think, he's gone. I'm good. Man, I'd take out up that highway up through there. And I'm telling you right now how I'm alive to be here tonight is only the grace of God. I mean, you know, you think you're invincible. Oh, I could drive. Well, you ain't old enough to know nothing much. Amen. It was just the grace of God. But all of a sudden, one morning, I watched him go down that road, and I thought, man, I've got this thing. He's gone. I can play now. I can have a good time. I'm fixing to sure enough burn that road up th through there. And I went up through these little S curves like that, and we were straightening them things, you know. And man, all of a sudden, I looked up, and here his pickup come. <laughs> And I had forgotten that there was a little cutoff road down below the house that made a circle and brought you back in up on the upper side of where we lived at. He was a little bit smarter than what I was. Man, he had eased around through there. He knew I left for school about 10 minutes after he was down the road. And buddy, here he come. And I looked up. When I seen it, there wasn't no pulling it back. It was too late. I run him out of the road and run him down into the ditch. It wasn't but about two minutes until that little pickup was a sitting right up on the back side of that 78 Thunderbird and one finger in the window was going like this. Amen. And when I pulled over, he walked up and he said, Give me the keys right now. He said, You can ride that school bus or walk. But you're not riding and driving that car. I said, I work for this car. It's my car. You can't take it. He said, shut your mouth. <laughs> Wish I had a. <laughs> had to borrow a shirt when I got to school. Didn't have blood on it. Because he shut it for me. He said, what are you saying all that for? I thought I could fool him. Yeah. But see, he had done played all them games. Yeah. He had done had them times in his life. You know what he told me? He put my car up for sale, put it down the edge of the yard, put it up for sale, like to kill me. I went up there and begged mom. I said, Mama, you can do more with him than anybody. He said, Not when he's mad, I can't, son. And he said, you run him out of the road. Over. I said, well, I didn't mean to run him out of the road. I just couldn't do nothing about it. <laughs> she said, yeah, you could have. You could have been driving like somebody who's got sense. I said, come on, Mama. She said, no, son. We've done buried one boy. And all he's trying to do because he loves you is keep you alive. Because he don't want to bury you. And right now, you ain't got sense enough to know it. But we're your parents, and we're in charge of you. And we're obligated to look after you. Do you grow up enough to where you can see we're not doing this to hurt you. We're doing it to protect you. Amen. My car sat out there. there was, I bet you there's 25 people trying to buy it. Which he'd go down there and tell them. It. He'd come back to the house and say, Ah, we got within $100. Your car had been gone. We got within $100. <laughs> About a week after that, he'd give it back to me. And he told me why he'd taken it. He said, son, I have to go up there and stand beside a grave. And he said, I couldn't bear to think about if I just stood back and let you just do what you wanted to do. And I might have to lay you next to your brother. Good day. And have to live with the fact that I could have stepped in and tried to stop you. Amen. Could have stepped in and tried to prevent you. Mm -hmm. When do we have it in the grasp and let it slide through? Mm -hmm. It's when good godly people have tried to tell us. And tried to point us to Christ. 
And we look at them like they're stupid. Amen. It's when we go to church and been brought up in a church where God's at. Do you hear what I said? I didn't say it wouldn't just go to church. Amen. Because God's not at every church. Amen. The Bible said in the last days there'll be a form of godliness, but the, they'll deny the power there. I'm talking about you'll miss it, honey, when you've been brought up in a good spirit filled church uh, yeah. or that Bible's being preached and taught uh, and the Holy Ghost shows up uh, yeah. on Sunday and it begins to draw those lost people yeah. and you witness people coming to Christ being yeah. saved. Amen. But yet you slap its hand and say, not interested. That's when you'll let them slide right through your fingertips. Can I ask you a question tonight and I'm done? Where are you at in your relationship with the Lord? Man. Have you ever been saved? Have you ever decreased in your life? That he might increase. Huh? You see, the truth of the matter is this. If you get saved, you'll have to jump all of your ideology. And you'll have to walk your way to Jesus. And say, I'm junking everything I got. Amen. But I'm going to put my trust and belief in you. Amen. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. Yes, hallelujah. But you'll save me. Yes. Amen. Acts 4.12, what did he say? He said, now is the appointed time. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. James chapter 4 and verse 2. He said, you have not because you ask not. That's right. Amen. He went on to say in verse 3, and you receive it not even when you decide to finally ask because you're asking for the wrong Amen. Amen. Can I tell you what I need tonight? I don't need a new home. I got a little old Jim Walters home up there in Georgia. It's just fine. It was my daddy and mama's first house. Built in 1953. I'm happy. I don't need a new car. I got a little old Ford Escape sitting out there. It gets 43 miles to the gallon. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Got a motor home sitting over there at Fake Free Will Baptist Tour. That gets eight and a half miles to the gallon. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out a way to get a tow bar hooked from the car to that motor home. And pull it. <laughs> but the truth is, is I don't I don't need a new motor home. I've seen some people, if they couldn't keep up with the Joneses and have everything everybody else has had, they just make themselves miserable and everybody around. The Apostle Paul said, I know what it is to be a base. That's a little Greek word. That's at the very bottom. He said, I also know what it is to be a bound. Another little Greek word, word means the upper echelon or, or the uppermost outer limits. He said, I know what it is to be a base. I know what it is to be a bound. I know what it is down there. I know what it is up there. He said, but in life, he said, I've learned, therefore, one thing, to be content Amen. with such as yeah. I am. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what some of us will do? We'll miss heaven. Because we haven't learned that principle. That there's more in life to be concerned about than houses and land, silver and gold. I think about I drive by all the time we travel a lot. I drive by a lot of people and you'll see these old home places set and falling down. You know what happened? Some mama, some daddy got sick and died. And they wanted to leave all of that to their kids. And the kids got mad at one another. And they fought over it and let it sit there until it rotted down. And then they'll sell the land and some stranger will come in there and get what that mom and daddy intended for them kids to be blessed with. And they won't even remember who it's all about. So what's it going to profit you to go after those things and miss hell? Miss the relationship with the Lord Jesus. 
We had a little woman in our church, her name Paul Ingray. I'll tell this, and then Mary, I want you to sing. Pauline was very poor. Her husband was a bootlegger. Wouldn't go to church. Wouldn't have nothing to do with God. Old Pauline loved God. I've seen as many people saved in her lap as what was saved in the altar at our church. That's how much she loved him. Yeah. Old Pauline, when it come time to die, she used to keep me when I was a little boy. She was our church shouter. I loved her. Wasn't a bit scared of her. I've been sitting in her lap and her go to shout and never drop me. That's the Holy Ghost. Man, old Pauline, she had shout and drop the hat. Drop the hat to get the shout. I used to get tickled at her. She'd jump up and run around the church. She'd clap in little hands. Whoa! Come get us right now, Jesus. I'm ready to go. Get us out of this old sin world. Oh, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And I remember looking over my mom and I said, Man, I ain't wanting to go that quick. Are you, mom? <laughs> Next day, mom dropped me off at her house because she kept us. In the summertime, you'd let old thunder cloud blow up and old thunder hit the ground, you know, and jar the house. She'd grab all those kids by the hand, run off in the back bedroom, get out beside the bed. Say, oh God, don't take us now, please. God, don't take us now. <laughs> oh, please, please, God. Yeah. Yeah. The spirit was willing, but the flesh got weak. <laughs> I'll never forget when she's a die. Oh, I loved her. Back then, uh, you either died at home. They took her to the nursing home. We're going to let her die at the nursing home. Her husband, he was a big gambler, big bootlegger. He left while she was sick. Them four boys of hers, that three of them was about drunkards. One of the boys was off in the army. And our whole church met up there at that old nursing home. I was just a little fella. I kept telling my mom and daddy, I said, I want to say bye, Miss Pauline. They said, son, she don't look like the Pauline. That cancer had just flat eat her up. They said, won't you just remember her like you used to remember her? I said, I won't do that, mama. I want to see Pauline. And so my mama kept on with my daddy. And my daddy said, okay. He said, let him in there, but it was about 20, 25, our church. She had been in a coma for over three days. Didn't even know she was in the world. Man, I walked in there, and of course her eyes were set, her little mouth was done open. She was in that death rattled, you know. Her hair didn't look nothing like what it did. I mean, it, a little boy, I was probably 10. It shocked me. And I stood up against the wall. I told Mama, I said, Mama, that ain't her. She said, that's what's left of her baby. She said, you won't tell her bye, man. You walk up there and you tell her. Mm -hmm. I walked up there and I, and I told Mom, I said, you come with me. She said, your daddy will go with you. Daddy walked up there with me and I was holding daddy's hand. So I didn't know where she was fit to go, but I didn't want to go with her. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a little boy. I reached out and I touched her on the hand. And I said, Miss Pauline, this is Randy Perry. I said, I just want to tell you, I love you. I love you like you're my own grandma. I'm sorry, you've been sick. I'm going to miss you. My daddy took me and pulled me by the hand. We walked back to the edge of the room. The church was all around the inside the room. They was singing songs. I mean, she'd been in a coma three days. And all of a sudden, she sat up in the bed and she started pointing and she started saying, Lord, look what a beautiful city. She said, would you listen to that singing? 
She looked around and she told each person in there goodbye. Told them how much she loved them. Yeah. She told my mama, she said, Miss Fanny, she loved my mama. She said, Miss Fanny, she said, I'd love to stay, but honey, she said, they're on the way, and I got to go now. Yeah. She said, but yeah. I'll catch you on the other side. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. She had to pull that little hand. You say, yeah. don't you guess she was yeah. out of her mind? Yeah. No, honey, she had. She was a sea in heaven, yeah. and she seen them, the angels, yeah. and she heard them singing. Yeah. Yeah. Friend, she said, I'm not about to let that slide out of my grasp. Hey, man. Hey, you know what she did? When she told all of us by, she just put that old hand down and fell back like a tree had been cut and she was gone. You say, didn't that hurt you? Not denying it, don't. Hey, man, you know why? Because I'm going to see her again. Why? Because she didn't let it slide through her fingerprints. Hey, she covers me down in the power of the
come on, die and go to hell because of myself and because of refusing to make a choice for the Lord. I wonder if there'd be one here. No one's looking around. Nobody's going to embarrass you. I wonder if there's one here that just slip up your hand and in doing so you'd be signifying preacher. I know I've never been saved, but I don't want to miss heaven. Because I've chosen this world that one day will pass away with a fervent heat. Preacher, pray for me. I know I need Jesus as my Savior. Would you just slip up your hand, take it back down. Don't have to say all those words verbally. By the raising of your hand, I know what you're implying. Anyone. Preacher, I've never been saved. Pray for me. Thank you, sir. Would there be somebody else? Preacher, I'm, I've never been saved. I've realized tonight that if Agrippa could miss it, I could miss it. If Judas could make a mistake with bad judgment and bad decisions, I could make the same mistakes. Please pray for me. I've never been saved. Anybody else? I don't want to die and go to hell when he prepared heaven if I just believe him and accept him in my heart. Anyone else? Slip up your hand. Take it back down. Preacher, I've never been saved. Just raise your hand, slip it up, take it back down, anyone else. I wonder if there are those here tonight that say, Preacher, I've been saved. There was a time in my life I was about as excited as what Donald with the Enlighteners were tonight. But as I sit here and I begin to contemplate on where I really am with Jesus tonight, I begin to realize that there's been a broken fellowship and it hadn't been his fault. It hadn't been of his doings. But it was a choice that I made to distance myself from him. I may have blamed it on somebody. I may have blamed it on other things. But looking at it in reality tonight, it was a choice I made. Tonight I've realized I made a poor decision. I've been saved. But I'm not where I ought to be with Christ. I don't want people to look at me and think, are they a Christian or are they not? Because there's not enough evidence anymore in my life that would point somebody to believe that I'm a follower of Christ. Please pray for me, preacher. I know I've been saved, but boy, that fellowship's not what it used to be between the Lord and I. Please pray for me. Would you slip up your hand if that's you tonight? And you care about getting back where you need to be. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Somebody else. Preacher, I've been saved. I'm just not where I need to be with God. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Look this way, if you would, please. I don't know what time it is. I don't really care at the moment. <laughs> I'll tell you this. This is the quietest place you're ever going to be. If you miss heaven, there's screaming and gnashing of teeth where the fire never goes out. And if you go there, you'll go as an intruder. Why choose that when you choose eternal life? Amen. If you die and go to heaven because you've chose Christ as your Savior, man, do you realize how much shouting? You think it got amped up in here a minute ago? You ain't heard nothing of what they do in heaven on a regular basis. Amen? You think I'm going to miss that? No. I got a mom over there. I got a daddy over there. I got two brothers over there. No, I ain't missing that. But if, uh, can I tell you this? But if I don't ever see mama, if I don't ever see daddy or my brother, I still ain't going to miss it. Amen. 
You say, why? Because I want to see the one who died for me. Amen. 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 Yeah. I want to see the one that not only died for me, but Amen. on the third day got back up for me. Yes. Amen. I want to see the one that not only got back up for me, but ascended back to the Father and he sat down in a finished work. He ain't got nothing yes. else Amen. to do. Amen. Except be an advocate and a mediator Amen. and an intercessor Amen. on my behalf yes. for mercy and grace Amen. to the heavenly yes. I'm going to count to three. If you're real serious about being saved tonight, won't be saved. Mm -hmm. When Mary starts this music at the count of three and the congregation stands, why don't you come and give me a hand? Amen. You say, can you save me, preacher? No, couldn't save myself. But I'll, for, I'll sure point you to one who can. Amen. 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 You that raise your hand in this building tonight and say, preacher, I was in the center of God's will at one time, but tonight I've realized... I sure miss that fellowship. Yes. You know what you ought to do? Just bypass the preacher. Yeah, yeah. Find you a place in the altar. That's right. Yes. You say, what should I say? I'd start out with this. I'm sorry. Yes. You want to get God's attention? Yes, hallelujah. Come to him humble and just say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Yes. yes. Amen. It wasn't you, it was me, God. Yes. But it's me that's asking you yes. to forgive me. Yes. And to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. He said, if you'll come ask me for that, I'll in no wise cast you out. Amen. One, two, three. Amen. Would you come? Altars are open. Are you going to miss it? Because you let it slide through your fingertips? I have nothing but heartaches and trouble. That little girl right there that's come to the altar has bounced the baby on her knee all night by the Holy Spirit's talking to her. You know where she's at? She's an altar prayer. If that woman right there can concentrate on what she needs to do with, with her Savior, none of us has got an excuse tonight. Amen. Hands all over this building went up. What you standing there for? You see, even in this invitation, we're making a choice. We're making a decision. We're either choosing to say, Lord, I'm going to come to you and let you fix me. Or we're making the decision to say, I'm just not through handling my life myself. Let me tell you what, handling your life yourself will produce a bigger mess that God has to clean up. And now I have everything. Oh, I wouldn't miss heaven this world. One day this old world will go up in a fervent heat. He'll burn her down. Give me some people who want more of it. I have everything Amen. I like German chocolate cake. I can usually eat more than one piece. I have Jesus oh. to show you. get a hold of something that's good, you want some more of it. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. He ain't never done me bad. He's always done me good. And if you'll be truthful, He ain't never done you bad. you say, but He didn't answer my prayer the way I wanted Him to. I'm glad He didn't answer some prayers I prayed the way I wanted Him. I'd be in a grave if He had it. He's a merciful God. He's a graceful God. He's a compassionate God. 
best thing you can do is run to it. Don't let it slide through your fingertips. Don't go out of here and crawl in your car and get up Millingport Road or across Millingport Road and say, what's wrong with me? I, I should have went. I, I felt God pulling me. I knew that man preached what God gave him and it was just for me. What's wrong with me? Am I about beyond preaching? Am I about beyond repenting? Oh, when you get to the place you can harden your heart and walk out of the church building after God's been in His presence like He has been here tonight, you're letting it slide right through your fingers. Why don't you just come on to God? You say, preacher, I just can't do that. You know what I can't is? It's the brother that I don't want to. I found out we do a lot of things. We make up our mind to do something, we do it. You know what you got to do tonight? you got to make a conscious decision. I'm tired of going my way. I'm ready to surrender, hang out the white flag, and come and do it God's way. Amen. I, I'm telling you now, I've never met a Christian, a real Christian, that could tell me they were sorry they accepted Christ as their Savior. I've met a whole bunch of them that's looked at me and said, I wish I'd have done it a long time before I did. That's the love of God. That's the mercies of God. Would you come? Would you come? Are you making big plans for your future, but you forgot all about God? Oh. I hear people all the time. I hear school teachers. I hear college professors. Instructing their classes and instructing their students and how to plan and how to get a goal for their life. And they never one time mention a relationship with Jesus Christ. I tell you something. It's fine to have goals. Nothing wrong with setting goals. Buddy, you better include Jesus. You better have Him at the forefront and at the helm. Amen. He doesn't need to be second or third down the totem pole. He needs to be number one sitting up there and let everything else line up behind it. Amen. And if you'll do that, He said, I'll bless you going out and coming in. Honey, some of us are not being blessed because we ain't got Him in the rightful place. Amen. You've got Jesus, what else more you need? Huh? Yeah. You say, well, I don't know about that. I tell you this. There was a beggar laying over there at the gate. He found out if he had Jesus, he had all he needed, didn't he? Man, the Bible said in Luke 16, the beggar died. And what did he do? He lifted up his eyes in Abraham's bosom. Amen. And he was being comforted. But that rich man died and he had everything the world had him. But he lifted up his eyes in hell being in torment. Yeah. The old beggar had the dogs. The only ones that showed him compassion was a dog who would come and lick his sword. But when it come dying time, he got promoted. Huh? How'd you like to be promoted tonight? How many of you glad you come to church? I want you to look at me just a moment. See my hands? They're clean. The old preacher preached me under conviction. I didn't understand when I was a little boy. I do now. He preached till he gives slap out. He'd beg, plead people to come. But then he'd get to a point where he'd stop. You could just see he'd just run it out. And he'd say, you see my hands? They're clean. I pray your heart is. I've done all I can do. I've gone as far as I can go. So tonight when you walk out of Lighthouse Baptist Church, if you didn't get saved tonight, don't blame me. 
Don't blame the Holy Ghost. Don't blame this Bible. Don't you blame Jesus. He opened up the avenue for you to come to Him, but you let it slide through your grasp for now. You walk out of this church tonight, and you didn't get right with God. Don't you get mad at me. I'm just a messenger. Amen. Don't get mad at the Holy Ghost because He tried to draw you. You say, how do you know? Good Lord, if you couldn't feel Him, you probably need to get saved rather than get right with God. He's here. But you have to listen closely as He calls your name out. Sometimes He speaks in a mighty rustling wind. But most often times He speaks in a still, small voice and says, Come unto me. Yes. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. Matthew 11, 28. But most of us won't do it, will we? Most of us come to him after he has to break us. Why don't you avoid the breaking and just humble yourself and come to him willingly and experience the compassion of a loving Savior. Amen. God bless you, Brother Gary. You come. Miss Mary will be over here in the side wings. We got our product and all that over there. Most of you that's been here every night knows that already. And uh, thank you for praying for me tonight. Amen. Uh, I've struggled tonight to try to preach with the pain in my knee too. And uh, it's been a job. But uh, God's able. Amen. God's faithful. Amen. For a few minutes there, I forgot about it. Amen. Amen. Got a little sweet in here a while ago. I forgot Amen. about it. Amen. If the door had been open, I'd probably run. Amen. Amen. Y'all could have sent the paramedics to pick me up right now. Oh, well, God's been in this house tonight. He's a glad Amen. Amen. Hey, listen. Don't let him slide through your fingertips. That's right, man. Don't get consumed with this old crazy world. Don't drive your tent stakes too deep. That's right. You're not going to stay here if you're a child of God. That's right. I don't know about you. I'm 63 years old and I figured out I got more runway behind me than I got left out in front of me. You know what I've started doing? I've started cutting things loose rather than attaching to things. Amen. I'm ready to pull up and get out of here. God bless you for my prayer. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Everybody say 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. This is a wonderful crowd on Monday night. I want to thank all the visitors that's from different churches coming. Appreciate it. We'll be here tomorrow night. You come. Not because I'm here, but because he's here. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Randy. You appreciate the word, say amen. 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 You appreciate the truth, say amen. 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 I love a man that don't cut corners, say amen. amen. He preaches the truth. Amen. 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 I love that. I tell you what, if you're here tonight, and you've never been saved, don't leave this property, amen, amen. without Jesus. Amen. We'll be here, amen. amen. Brother Randy can't come to you, but you come up to him and tell him how much you love him and appreciate the word and the truth, amen. Thank you, amen. Donna and Frankie. Amen. 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 Boy, that was a blessing, amen. amen. Well, I tell you what, uh, God is here, amen. 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 And uh, we, we knelt down at the altar. There was a little granny over here a while ago. You know what her prayer was? She was praying that God would save her children. Amen. 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 That's what we need. Amen. That's it. That's right. We've got lost loved ones. And we've got lost friends and lost co workers. We need to put them on the altar. Amen. Amen. We need to pray them and seek Jesus on them. Amen. 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 We need to do that. Amen. Thank you for being here. Lord, thank you for your presence. Amen. Amen. The presence of God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for each one. Thank you for Lighthouse. Thank you for being faithful and being here. Come back tomorrow night. Thank you, visitors. Come back tomorrow night. It's going to be greater. Amen. I don't know how can get any better than tonight. Amen. Or, or Sunday. Amen. But he can. Amen. You know what he says? Draw nine to me. And I'm drawing nine to you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, all we can do is just say thank you. I thank you, Father, one night in this very church. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost of God spoke to my heart. And I came over right over here on the right. And I asked you to save me. 
I thank you, Lord, that you was faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me. I'm thankful, Lord, I was unlearned and I was ignorant towards the things of God. But, Lord, you didn't cast me out. You received me as a 12-year-old boy. Father, I thank you for that. I, I trust tonight, Lord, if somebody is not saved, and I believe they are in this place. Lord, do not let them leave this ground because they may not have another chance. Yes, God. I pray, Holy Ghost, continue to convict them yes, God. and deal with their hearts. Yes, God. Maybe there's some Christians. You, they've lost their testimony, their influence. They can't even feel the joy in the presence of God anymore. I pray, God, before they leave this place, will they make it right. Great. God, thank you for... Uh, preacher man like Randy, God that will stand in the gap and preach the word. Thank you for the truth. We love you. Father, watch over us. Father, give us traveling grace and mercy as we leave. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake hands with one.